In today's globally integrated and increasingly competitive environment, organizations aim to manage their resources more efficiently in order to be sustainable in the long run. This notion has led to the rise of human resource management, improving employer-employee relations, and achieving the objectives of the business while satisfying employee needs. One of the widely studied areas of management is conflict resolution. Organizations continue to improve these areas to ensure employees are as efficient and productive as possible. This will ensure the business is maximizing its profitability. Conflict resolution is defined as the process that occurs when one party perceives another party to have negatively affected or be about to negatively affect something the first party cares about. Studies have shown that conflict resolution maintains positive relationships at work and may enhance task performance as it provides a cohesive and efficient environment. There are various ways of handling conflict and can be explained by the dual concern model, whereby the preferred method of conflict resolution is based on the concern for self or assertiveness and the concern for others or empathy. There are five styles in the dual concern model. Firstly, avoidance is a suppression of thinking about the conflict, meaning the employee denies a problem exists, which occurs when there is a low concern for self and others. Competition occurs when assertiveness is highest and empathy is lowest, utilizing personal skills to seek domination over others. Collaboration or cooperation can be used to reach a compromise by considering the interests of oneself and others. Accommodation occurs when an employee gives up his own needs and concerns for others to resolve conflict. Lastly, compromise serves as a combination of these approaches. This basic concept is developed further into different conflict resolution theories. The theory of cooperation and competition, developed by Deutsch, explains the need for both parties to discuss their goals, making them competitive and cooperative. This creates an element of trust between the two parties and leads to conflict resolution. Fisher and Roy also followed this notion by introducing four principles for effective negotiation. Separation of people from their problem, focused on interest, not position, creating a range of options and solutions, based the agreement of the criteria. Burton explains that the human needs for identity, security, recognition and equal participation are the reasons for conflict. By acknowledging these needs, management can establish relationships with its employees and resolve conflict. As such, these studies have shown that management must move away from socio-economic conflict where there is an emphasis on the person rather than the task or issue, and towards conflict management, where the conflict can be used to maximize benefits and minimize co negative consequences. In turn, organizations would experience a more efficient workplace and greater profitability. The main theory of focus today is the theory of cooperation and competition. This theory states that the way goals are perceived determines how people interact with each other and the resulting outcome. Cooperation occurs when people believe their goals are positively correlated, so that as one person achieves their goals, others also achieve their goals. They understand that others' goal attainment helps them, and that they can be successful together. This leads to constructive controversy, which is the open-minded discussion of diverse ideas, and results in mutually advantageous quality solutions. This positive experience also gives confidence to group members that they can handle conflicts effectively. Competition occurs when people believe their goals are negatively correlated, so that as one person achieves their goals, others fail to achieve their goals. They conclude that when others are productive, they are less likely to succeed themselves. This leads to avoiding a close-minded discussion and flexibility and results in deadlock or coercion into a solution. This negative experience induces skepticism among group members that they can handle conflict and also results in frustration, aggression, hostility and revenge. Additionally, goal independence occurs when people believe their goals are unrelated, so that as one person achieves their goals, others' goals' achievement will not be affected at all. They conclude that how others act means little to them, and that they can achieve their goals in the conflict or not. Overall, whether people conclude their goals are primarily cooperative or competitive profoundly affects their orientation and intentions towards each other. A study conducted in 1999 examined the theory of cooperation and competition in relation to managing conflicts between employees and supervisors in a large Canadian forest product company. The employees and supervisors were interviewed about 68 complaint incidents. 
regarding scheduling, production, safety and compliance with the bargaining agreement. For each incident, they have indicated their goals as cooperative, competitive or independent. They extend that they expect that themselves and the others will work effectively and they extend that they engage in these activities in response to specific Likert type questions. The study found that cooperative compared to competitive and independent goals promote open-minded discussions of complaints that result in efficient resolution that benefit both supervisors and employees. More specifically, complaint incident which cooperative goals were ones in which supervisors and employees had positive expectations prior to the interaction, where people negotiated open-mindedly leading to efficient work on the problems. New ideas were incorporated. The company demonstrated interest in the problem and mutually benefiting resolutions were developed. From this, people felt satisfied and believed that they had learned. In comparison, supervisors and employees who had competitive goals lacked confidence that they could manage the complaint. People had difficulty communicating and exchanging information open-mindedly. Complaints with independent goals were also categorized by closed-mindedness. From competitive and independent handling, people felt frustrated. Hence, developing cooperative goals and open-minded negotiation skills can help supervisors and employees to create integrative solutions to conflicts. Now we will take a look at the conflict management in the real world by analyzing a business case study on Maruti Suzuki's Indian Limited. Established as a joint venture between Suzuki Motors Japan and the Indian government in 1981, the company's aim was to produce the people's car, becoming successful with 80% of Indian market share. Maruti Suzuki was regarded as a model employer, characterized by positive human resource management. The company offered employees high wages, positive welfare facilities, opportunities for development and training, and inclusion in production and decision-making processes, fostering a teamwork environment. The company had been excelling in the market, but increased competition had forced it to make production more efficient causing Maruti Suzuki to lose focus on people management resulting in conflicting priorities of management and staff. 2000-2011 was a time of industrial unrest at Maruti Suzuki and 2011 highlighting a particularly difficult year for conflict management. Employees had joined a new union called Maruti Suzuki Employees Union and had applied for recognition to the Register of Trade Unions. However, management was against the new union establishment as there was already a management-backed union that employees could join. The management wrongly assumed that the goal of employees was for industrial action as opposed to empowerment. In response, management sent out a form to employees requesting them to revoke their membership of the new union the day after the application was lodged. As unions facilitate meditation between management and employees, the request of recognition would have allowed for cooperative goals to be achieved, with employees merely asking for opportunity for mutual exchange. Union representatives also explained to management that the request for recognition did not mean any industrial action would take place, merely the opportunity for future constructive controversy or open-minded discussions. The act of sending out the revocation of union membership forms to employees without discussion was perceived as unnecessary in the face for management characteristic of close mindedness and cohesion. Therefore, goals become competitive. Conflict within Maruti Suzuki then escalated with 2,500 employees striking without notice on Saturday the 4th of June, resulting in massive production losses for the company and harsh disciplinary actions for employees with 11 staff losing their jobs. This outcome further reveals the destructive nature of competitive goals with relationships fragmented, poor decisions made and production losses. With employees seeking revenge through hostile strikes and a feeling of overall frustration between all parties. After many negotiations, mediations, strikes and employee pay losses, the conflict was still not resolved, highlighting the negative consequences of conflict in a workplace when managed in a competitive way. In sum, the theory of competitive and cooperative goals is applicable to real-world scenarios such as the conflict experienced within Maruri Suzuki. The conflict between the employees and management escalated due to competitive goals by both parties and a win-lose mentality. This resulted in a lose-lose situation of cohesion, production loss, strikes, poor relationships. Indeed, the escalated conflict became impossible to manage. 
At both parties adopted a cooperative approach initially instead, where they see the goals of union formation as one that could benefit both employees and management, it may have resolved the conflict, enabled quality decisions and built good relationships. Now to conclude, we will discuss the positive characteristics of being cooperative based on the theory. There is effective communication as ideas are shared and accepted. Friendliness, helpfulness and less obstructiveness is expressed in the discussions. There is a good coordination of effort, division of labour and high productivity. Individuals are also more satisfied with the contributions of others and the solutions. A feeling of confidence is in one's own ideas and in the value that others attach to those ideas. Willingness to enhance the other's power to accomplish the other's goals because as the other's capabilities are strengthened, you are also strengthened. There are also negative effects to a competitive process. Communication is impaired as the individuals seek to gain advantage by misleading the other. Obstructiveness and lack of helpfulness lead to mutual negative attitudes and suspicion of each other's intentions. Individuals are unable to divide their work so they duplicate each other's efforts. If they do divide the work, they feel the need to check what the other is doing continuously. Conflicting parties seek to enhance their own power and to reduce the power of the other. The conflict becomes a power struggle or a matter of moral principle and is no longer confined to a specific issue at a time given and place. It is important to note that there are limitations when applying the theory in practice. Considerable organizational change and effort may be necessary in order to develop cooperative goals. Tough escalated conflicts are very, very difficult to manage as individuals continue to counterattack. Sometimes competitive conflict would seem to be useful, for example. Competition between firms can be used for stimulating innovation and customer choices. Indeed, competitive conflict is often a reality, such as when two people must compete for one promotion. Overall, this theory, it does not offer simple techniques to resolve conflict. Rather, it outlines the relationships and skills needed to deal directly and constructively with them. With that, we have come to the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.